Hey guys, this is Daniel from the Truck Insurance Channel, and I'm going to run through the quote form here for cooking your DOT number. This is the scenario where like, you want to get through the first 90 days or 180 days where some brokers might not work with you, and you want to start with the bare minimum just to get your authority active. Um, I have a lot of people that ask me to do this, so I'm making it a little bit easier for everybody to, to learn about it and then get quotes for it. So... For this example, whether you've you've incorporated, got your DOT authority application in and everything already or not, like if you just want to see what it might be to start with this, you can fill this out, all right? You're not required to have an LLC and all that formed already, so make up a business name if you don't. If you already have your LLC and all that, make sure you put this in here, and it needs to match exactly as you did it, like as you put everything in your authority application. But again, if you haven't done that yet, you don't have your DOT number and everything, you can make some of this up just to get a quote. All right, and I'm gonna go through this and show you how to get the best quotes for this. So business name, DBA name if you have one, DOT number if you've already applied, EIN if you've already got that. If not, that's okay. Business owner's name, this is really important. Uh, whoever's the business owner or like the uh, president, CEO, however you know they're titled, whatever's on the LLC or the corporation filings needs to go on here. Sometimes people ask me about using other people's name for uh, credit purposes, you know, if they've got better credit, you list them to get a cheaper quote. We can do that as long as they're like actually involved in the daily operations and listed on your filings for your LLC or, or your corporation, like your uh, articles of incorporation or our articles of organization. We need that person actually listed on there. Otherwise, we could have a serious issue <laughs> if a claim comes up or anything. That's material misrepresentation. You don't you don't want to venture into that. So, anyways, business owner's name, business owner's date of birth. Uh, social, you don't have to put the social in here, but if you do, it just helps us get the most accurate quote we can for you. Phone number and email. All right. Uh, make sure this email is, is typed in all perfectly because we're going to reply with your quote to this email. So make sure that's accurate. Next up, business owner's home address. This address, regardless of what you've put on authority application, where you plan on doing business, any of that, if you're the business owner up here, all right, this address should match what's on your driver's license, even if you're not going to be a driver, all right? This is part of what helps us uh, make sure that quotes are super accurate, all right? So if you're the business owner, this address should most likely be what's on your driver's license, all right? So there we go for that. Next up, business address, all right? A lot of times you have a different business address than your home address, or you might park the truck somewhere other than your home, all of that. So if your business address is different, uh, just select no, and then you can type in your business address. If it's the same, select yes. Same with your mailing. If it's the same, select yes. If no, type in your mailing address. All right, and these two things really, really need to match what's on your authority application, okay? So if you used one business address and then another address for your mailing address, and those don't match your actual home address, make sure you put in all three of these addresses so that we can get everything accurate for you. All right, next. So next up, what kind of truck do you plan on eventually running? So you might not even know yet. So you could select you could select semi or box truck, whatever works for you. Um, what we're going to try and do is set this up so it makes a really easy transition from just the minimum to activate your authority into a full policy where you can actually run with it. And when we know ahead of time what you're going to do, that helps us make everything really smooth when it's time to transition. Okay, so let's just say you're going to eventually run a box truck and you're going to rent a box truck to start. You're not going to buy or lease one. So yeah, I'll be renting a box truck. What rental company will you use? That'll help us establish the quote because each rental company has different requirements and then garaging zip code. Okay. Regardless of whatever addresses you put on the first page, wherever you plan on parking your truck, let us know right here. Okay. Next. All right, so this is where you're going to put in your personal vehicle info. And we're starting with your personal vehicle because that's the cheapest way to do this, okay? So add vehicle, year, make, model, VIN, garaging zip code. It's going to make me type one in. So, uh, yeah, just, you know, punch all that in, and that's what we're actually going to start the policy with. And then we're going to switch it to whatever truck you end up getting. This is just to, you know, get some time on the authority and do it as cheap as possible while you're uh, – while you're not actually operating. Once you're actually operating, we're going to go in here and make some updates and uh, make it so you're you know able to run and be compliant with everything. All right, next. Is the business owner a driver? Um, yes. 
All right. Most of the time you want the business owner to be a driver no matter what, unless they have a really bad driving record. In that case, uh, you you might not want them to be a driver. But even if they're not a driver, you probably still want to list them as a driver just because it's it's going to make the, the quote come out better. All right. So is the business owner married or single? Punch in the driver's license, the state. Does the business owner have a CDL? This can get you a discount. What year was the CDL issued? Like original CDL issue date. So like if you got your CDL in 2016, type in 2016. If you didn't, if you don't have a CDL, perfectly fine. If you're going to have any other drivers or if the owner like for sure is not going to be a driver, just add the driver here. All right. Simple and easy. You just pop that up, punch them in. Good to go. Next. All right. So discounts. This is so big and everyone always skips this. If you currently have personal auto insurance, there's a big old discount for that. So upload a copy of your ID card. All right. Uh, from whoever you have your personal insurance through or a declaration page. If you have that, most of the time people don't use that. Uh, but your ID card is easy to get. If you have like, if you already have progressive, if you have all state, state from whoever you have, normally there's an app and your ID card is in the app. Okay. And you can just do a screenshot and upload that. It's perfectly fine. And then what did, what year did you incorporate your business? You know, most of the time it's going to be this year. Um, or maybe you haven't yet just put in 2021 or the current year. Uh, unless, you know, if you incorporated a year ago and you've already got that business established, let us know. Cause that, that can make a difference. Right. Uh, next. All right. Coverages. We're just going to quote the minimum required auto liability based on what you put in for your authority application. All right. The cheapest thing you can do is in your authority application, put in one non-commercial motor vehicle that is under 10,000 pounds. Like, uh, I'll have an, another video describing what to type in uh, throughout the authority application to get where your minimum requirement for BIPD, which is your auto liability, it will show 300,000, all right? Once we, once we get the policy established, the filing's done when we bind the policy, all right, your, your filings will show 300K. And that's perfectly fine. Because once you actually go to operate three months down the road or, or further out, whenever, you'll go in and do an MCS 150 update with your authority, where then it'll bump the minimum required limit up to match whatever your operations require. So like if you're a box truck, it'll bump up to a 750 or a million as the minimum requirement limit. Okay, just because it shows 750 doesn't mean you're not actually going to get a million. No one really cares if you have 750. It's just what the FMCSA requires. The brokers, Amazon, anybody else you actually run for are going to want to see a million, but that's a, that's another topic. Anyways, so just uh, check the links below so you can find out some more on that. And then, yeah, so as far as the quote you get, it'll be whatever your minimum limit is on your motor carrier application, which is should show 300. But if you've done anything otherwise, we'll just match whatever's on there. So next... All right. If you have any comments, have any questions, anything extra you want us to, you know, work up in the quote for you, plug that in here, click I agree and submit. And then you're good to go. We'll get you the quote back hopefully within like one business day. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Um, and then we can also quote up like a full quote of, you know, everything you're going to need to operate just so you know ahead of time what it's going to be down the road. And uh, yeah, guys, appreciate it. Like and subscribe um schedule calls with us shoot us an email if you have other questions whatever you got we're, we're here to help thank you have a good day